BBC Radio Cumbria, Sport. Yes, afternoon then, welcome to Brunton Park for our League 2 action here on BBC Radio Cumbria Sport for your Saturday afternoon. Carlisle unbeaten here in the league for 30 weeks now, unbelievably, trying to protect that record against a Mansfield side who've jumped from 18th to 9th since Steve Evans took over as their manager. He's a big figure, he's a charismatic figure, and no doubt will be in for some stick from the paddock today, Steve Evans. We have uh, spotted him since he arrived here today with his Mansfield side. We'll have a look down their team in just a moment. First, Carlisle, they are unchanged from Tuesday night against Grimsby, that 2 all draw at Blundell Park. A great point in the grand scheme of things, meaning that they close the gap to just three points on the league leaders, Plymouth, going into this one. They're unchanged in personnel, but they do change their formation. It's not the 4-5-1 like they started with on Tuesday. They go 4-3-3, so what looks a little bit more attacking ahead of this one. It's goalkeeper Mark Gillespie, full-backs Tom Miller and Danny Granger in the centre, Sean Brisley keeps his place alongside Michael Reigns. Three-man midfield, Jason Kennedy, Mike Jones, and uh, also playing alongside them in that midfield is Luke Joyce, who is still an ever-present in the league this season. Up top, Nicky Adams and Reggie Lamb flanking either side of the man that Chris Lumsden and Paul Newton have just been talking about, Charlie White. Nine goals in eight for the Teesside-based striker. He is absolutely flying, as are the Blues. The Carlisle substitutes this afternoon, then David Atkinson, Mark Ellis, Derek Eric Asamoah, Macaulay Gillespie, Joe McKee, Sean Miller and the goalkeeper Max Crocombe. I guess the big talking point when you look at that straight away is Jabba Ivory. You have seen him in and around the ground today, Chris, but nowhere to be seen on the team sheet. Yeah, I think it must be something, must be struggling. I think he'd definitely have him as at least back up on the bench, wouldn't he, keep curl? So I think we'll know more about that after the game. I think if not starting, as I said, he, he definitely would have been on the bench fit, so... Bit of a blow, but do you keep him out of this game so it enables him to come back the rest or risk him and then he's out for a few weeks? So it, it's, it's it's a good one that he can leave him out this one. Well, Mansfield are 4 4 2 in how they set up the experienced goalkeeper Scott Shearer between the sticks for them. Back four, Reese Bennett, Malvin Benning, the captain Lee Collins and Christian Pierce. Their midfield, Chris Clements, Mitchell Rose, Jamie Maguire and Oscar Goban. And Pat Hoban is up top with their lead marksman. Matt Green as we are set to get underway just a point to note on the Mansfield bench by the way Kevin Hurst who of course spent some time here with Carlisle back in the day probably around about 10 years ago now as we are set to get off and running false start and back we'll go again Carlisle by the way will go right to left as we look at it defending the Warwick Road end in their blue shirts white shorts and blue socks no need for a change to Mansfield's kit they are in the colour you'd expect them playing left to right in yellow shirts blue shorts and yellow socks and Charlie White is penalised early on on a pitch which of course Chris Lumsden underwent a pitch inspection I'm told by the club they didn't really have that much concern about it but the referee as it is in this day and age had to call a pitch inspection just to be sure yeah I think you know by all reports not in doubt but as you say you've got to be careful and you don't want the Mansfield travelling supporters coming all the way up and then suddenly it's off so Right, this in all round looks perfect, doesn't it, to be honest? Yeah, and it's probably no harder than it would be on a summer's day in July, I guess, as the ball is out for a throw into Carlisle in the left back position, and Danny Granger will be the man to take it. Good number of Mansfield fans appear to have travelled. They are occupying the section of the letter C in the east stand, as always. Brisley clears then up towards halfway. Reggie Lamb can't flick on, he's got presence in his back in the shape of one of the Mansfield defenders, Christian Pierce. He clears long, Reigns then hooks it back towards halfway for Carlisle. Miscued header around the halfway line by Clements, though lets the Blues back on it with Reggie Lamb. Over the top, too hard, far too hard to their goalkeeper, although that maybe gives an indication of the pitch a bit there because the keeper had come high to take it and then had to scamper backwards quickly to get it under control. It shot up quite it quick did, on him. Yeah. It's a funny one with the pitch, it looks immaculate from up here and it will be surface-wise, you know, grass and stuff, but... Will it be absolutely born hard underneath or will it have that little bit of dew on where you, you wear a mouldy stud and then suddenly you're slipping all over the place? Calm defending from the right back, Reese Bennett there, just turned away from the presence of Jason Kennedy and then wins a throw in for his side on the halfway line near to where Keith Curl is this afternoon, the Carlisle manager. Bennett will take the throw in himself then. It's probably about five or ten yards back from the halfway line, in fact, and will look to throw it up the right hand line. Up it goes. Well up, Danny Granger wins his aerial battle, heads it almost clear, 
and then knocked back over the top by Mansfield and defended by Sean Brisley, who's shunted out of play by Matt Green as he does so, but it's an early corner to the visitors. Yeah, visions of last week there, the ball was headed forward, and Green's just managed to get inch of his hair on that one there, because if he didn't, Green was in behind, so... Just got to be careful that Green's always going to play on the shoulder. Hoban's a busy lad, got him from Oxford. Not prolific with the goals, but someone who's a right handful and you know, put himself about, and you know you're in a game with him. Well, Gobin will take the corner from this side, and left-footed in it goes. Towards the centre of the box, easy header away for Carlisle in the end, and Reggie Lamb should fully sweep up from the edge of the D. Not the most convincing clearance from Lamb, but thankfully it comes back to him, and he'll get another shot at it, and Carlisle should shift it away. The shout of man on puts pressure on Carlisle, but they have managed to fish it up to halfway. Too hard for Charlie White, though. Mansfield can return it to their keeper. No sombrero and shorts for Steve Evans in the cold of Carlisle this afternoon. He's down around the halfway line with his big manager's jacket on. Yeah, something that he probably was desperate to get out of at the time, but he'd done it. Live with them a little while, wouldn't it? But, no, good manager at this level, I think. Done well with Rodrum, done well with Crawley. And again, I think he'll do well with Mansfield. He'll have a lot of people, he'll have his game plan. He'll have people in there who he'll want to play and want to do a certain you know, style of play. He's Pat Hoban for Mansfield, moves it to the left-hand side to try and get the stags moving in towards that penalty area. Carlos seemed to have plenty of players around the ball to make a difference and clear it, and it is Joyce with the help of Tom Miller that win a throw-in for Carlisle here on BBC Radio Cumbria Sport. If you are joining us late, three and a half minutes played, it's still nil-nil for your Saturday afternoon action. And Carlisle have the throw in which Miller will put up the right-hand line. Not moved on by Charlie Wyke. In fact, picked up by Mansfield with Mitchell Rose. To the fullback Bennett, little dinked ball standing up towards Hoban. Not overly sure he'd be the best in the air, Hoban, but... He's made enough of a pain of himself, the little Irishman, to win a free kick around the edge of the box for Mansfield. And, well, they tossed it up to his head. He's only about five foot seven, Hoban, and he couldn't really do anything with it in the air. It bypassed him, but he still wins a free kick just by being a test, I guess. Yeah, exactly, I think. As I said, he's not one who's going to get your goals, but he's going to hassle and harry. He's a bit, you know, he won't go on to what he's done, but Glenn Murray was like that at first. And Carl, I learned his train. He wasn't prolific with the goals but what he'd do he'd, he'd give you a platform to work off because he'd just throw his elbows in he'd, he'd put his backside into people and you just knew you were in a game and obviously now Mansfield even under Adam Murray were always like this they like to get the ball forward you've seen them over the years and just always seem to play the same way don't they the aggressive but with fast wingers and a couple of forwards who can find the net not having that, that wall's 10 yards though He's going to struggle to get this up and over. It's so yeah, it's so close, isn't it, to the 18-yard? Chris Clements, who's standing over it, he's about a yard from the edge of the box for Mansfield. Doesn't get it over the wall. In fact, it's hit the wall and into the arms of Mike Gillespie it goes. In fact, the referee saying that Gillespie was over his line, but from where we are, it doesn't look like it was anywhere near no over idea. the line for a corner. But I guess the liner is in line with it, and if he makes that call... Yeah. Well, ref's got to go with it. Corner Mansfield, who are having some fairly early pressure here at Brunton Park, it is still nil-nil and the corner will come from the far right-hand side, the corner between the east stand and the Warwick, and it goes right-footed, swirling, Gillespie's backed off, there's the header and it's in! Matt Green got free of his man in the centre, Hoban got in there as well, and it's the little Irishman who wheels away taking the celebration. To be honest, it could have been either of the two of them in the end because they've managed to make that much space for themselves in the middle, and Mansfield have an early lead at Brunton Park. Pat Hoban scores with six minutes played. Well, the lads are complaining with the lines and saying it's not a corner. <coughs> You've then got to defend it, haven't you? But what a ball in. And it's right, is it four yards out, something like that? It's not Hoban, far, is it? As we said, not prolific for his goals, but he'll give you everything. And what desire he showed there. Came through a lot of people there. It's a point black head out. Mark Gillespie can't do anything about it. Can he do something about the initial cross? I don't know. Reigns and Brizzy have to see it again because the ball whipped in was so quick that it simply just hit his head and in it goes. And, you know we just not started again well we didn't start well against there's a couple of touches against Exeter where we didn't get ourselves into the game and it spread and today there's been a couple of passes where Tom Miller could have got the ball early but Kennedy of all people chose a different ball and it got cut out so this could be just one of the games where we're undone a little bit because 
Mansfield are just going to push and pressure now and with the new man now they're not going to let up at all it's going to be all action it's going to be 100 percent it's going to be physical and I guess that shows the sign of what a manager can do for a striker because in the last three weeks since Steve Evans arrived Hoban has now doubled his scoring tally he scored for them last week as well yeah exactly I mean, he's, he's got something you know, he's a player I'd like to play with you know he's not going to get that but you, when you look up he's going to be in that channel or that channel or when you tell him to defend he'll do it for you he's, he's a real real team player and it's good to see because I thought he was going to have to go back to Ireland and start again but Mansfield took the plunge of them and, the, and they've, they've got the rewards at the minute I like the right back for Mansfield as well I don't know if you've seen him over the years looks spent. clever on the ball doesn't yeah, he it does. Pat Hoban's goal then that separates the two sides 1-0 it is and the ball's at the feet of Carlisle's goalkeeper Mark Gillespie in his dark green kit this afternoon rolls it to the left hand side and Danny Granger is on it again Mansfield pressing really high and forcing Granger to go back to Gillespie in the Carlisle goal across to Brisley and he slings one left footed looking for the run of Charlie Wake. Wake is no move off it by Christian Pierce and the referee Seb Stocksbridge <laughs> agrees with that and it will be a free kick to Carlisle midway inside the Mansfield half just slightly to the left hand side well you can see what the Mansfield players are going to be like because the management team are straight on the fourth official straight away in. and that's what the players are going to be like under the paddock are going to enjoy this afternoon with him but he's passionate and he does it for a reason he does it for a reaction from his players and he gets it more often than not. Adam swings in the cross, he's gone all the way through and the keeper Shearer claims it as it bounces up on the six yard line in front of him. Michael Reigns had got free at the back post and had it been probably a little bit slower, Reigns might have got on that but it skips on, keeper's got it, still 1-0 Mansfield. A great ball from Nicky Adams. You know, if someone gets across the goalkeeper there, he's in no man's land and it could end up in the goal. But Hopefully it's a, ch it's a case of Mansfield have scored too early and, and they kind of sit back. I think when Exeter got the second goal last week, they suddenly realised they were in for the three points and just suddenly, you know, edged off a little bit. Yeah, we're not, we're not, we're not at it. Today. No, again, like Jones, it's, it's chesting it up. Another loose touch by Jones, and the shot from distance comes in, and right, it was never going to test Mark Gillespie. He saves it easily, but as you say, now Joyce and Jones are at each other in the centre of the park because both of them now have mislaid passes in the first seven or eight minutes. Just, we'll just watch and see if this spreads because it usually, it, you know, more often than not, it does when it's just a couple of people, just a little couple of passes, the crowd then get edgy. Here's Granger. This is better though, just having a little bit of the ball, but do we want Nicky Adams in front of the back four? Adams has slipped though as he's played it and it's meant his ball doesn't reach its intended target. Mansfield get it. Mansfield want a free kick and they don't get one. Kennedy up to Wake. First time ball brings Reggie Lamb into play on the right hand side. Trying to drive towards goal but the captain Lee Collins at the moment hold him off but Lamb's gone by him and delivers oh it was just on the head of Kennedy but then taken off by the Mansfield defender who heads it clear and Carlisle can start again from around the halfway line Lamb on it against his former side of course Reggie Lamb Lamb's Keith. on it today as you see he he's, he's looks like he's, he's got something about him today he's had a nice couple of touches Wake as well Brisley's misplaced his pass now and Mansfield are on it and as you say you can see from the noise of the fans that they're not going to put up with misplacing passes like that all game here's Nicky Adams well done really well done Nicky Adams I don't think he was ever really in control of that Adams but just took the touch then took the knock from the defender free kick Carlisle and you would say probably shooting distance yeah referee's got to let that go though Charlie Wake's in a good position Mansfield will be annoyed with themselves there they had good possession Corburn give it away unnecessarily there and, and that's been the case for Carlisle a few times this season we've, we've went behind and you think the other team's going to go on but they kind of shut up shop and they get a bit scared of playing which is why we've got this good you know our, our history's playing into our hands that we know we're going to come back at them so they get a bit scared and, and now we've got a chance for Danny Granger I think it's perfect perfect distance for him if you get too close to the box you can't get up and on now what we've seen about uh, Mansfield's shot but this is perfect for Danny Granger I still don't think they're 10 yards either though must have small feet the referee when he's pacing that out well Mansfield have five men in their wall however Jason Kennedy is puncturing it right in the middle as Danny Granger oh, does Danny. prepare to take this fairly central Chance. left footed over the wall and the keeper has to scroll to his left and push it wide for a corner it's actually a decent save from the keeper in the end with a slippy ball he couldn't really take the chance of holding on to it pushes it wide Carlisle corner shot on target yeah with the quality of Danny Granger you just you don't really watch the wall do you, you watch for where it's going to go you know he's going to get it up and under but 
as you say, probably comfortable save. You're expecting save that in the end, but it's good to test them in now a corner, which we're decent at. Chance to deliver then, and it will be Granger taking this as well, putting his left foot behind it. They go short to Carlisle, now oh, it comes in. Yes! Kennedy, yes! Kennedy. Jason Kennedy's level for Carlisle. 12 minutes on the clock, and United, as they did last week, have managed to get themselves back in the game. Fairly rapid, they were a goal down after seven. They're now level on 12, a well-worked corner from the right. Ball delivered in, Jason Kennedy loses his man in the centre and bullets the header into the bottom corner, and they're back level. It's 1-1 now. Yeah, it's a good, good, good corner, wasn't it? You know, we expect Danny Granger to put that in, don't we? And he hasn't. He's just knocked it to Danny, to Nicky Adams, who's whipped a great ball into the front stick. And again, Kennedy from nowhere, not picked up, glancing header, just less, has to let the ball do the work there, doesn't have to put neck muscles into it or anything. Let it clears his head into that far corner. You know, good again, a good response from Carlisle every time. And probably Mansfield's un undoing, as I said, they give the ball away in a silly area unnecessarily. And now Carlisle suddenly are at it. Ball over the top goes out for a goal kick to Carlisle. That uh, that now means that in my stint covering James, I've seen a goal every 17 minutes, which is pretty impressive, quite enjoyable. 1-1 one, one as a yellow smoke bomb goes off behind the right-hand goal in front of the Warwick. Mark Gillespie's played his kick and has to sort of step away from it. Smoke bomb is allowed to carry on as Danny Granger plays one over the top. Wyke chests it down, great link-up play from Wyke to bring in Reggie Lamb. Lamb turns his man, he's definitely on it this afternoon, Reggie Lamb, he's yeah. up for this. Joyce, oh, the ball takes a deflection through and actually might benefit Carlisle Kennedy's gone in the area, not a penalty. It's not a and dive. And a yellow card to Jason Kennedy for diving. It's not a dive. Well, he went into the box off balance, Jason Kennedy, then he did get touched and he did go down and, well, for a minute I thought the referee was yeah. racing for the spot, but he's given a yellow card to Jason Kennedy. To be honest, I was going to... I was pleased, but I was going to hammer the referee for giving the penalty but I've got a hammer for giving the yellow card as well because you can see there's a tangle there. He's not dived to go over and try and win a penalty. Well, at the minute, they're going to have to do something about that smoke bomb behind the right-hand goal because I'm guessing if any attack went down there, Mark Gillespie looks like he's in a, a field of fog at the moment. Doing, mate? Well, this is weird, this, because I, they must be doing something about it because I heard the briefing that was going on with the safety team as they arrived this day and they actually flagged up flares and pyrotechnics and what they would do to deal with it. And the stewards were specifically told... Don't you go near them. We have specially trained people to deal with things like smoke bombs and pyrotechnics. Is that just time? Because it's just... Uh, it, it's, As oh, they got to it, it went out. Bin. <laughs> As they got to it, Extra it went three out. quid an hour, that. <laughs> I wonder if they will be invoicing for that, because they walked the full length of the pitch to put the smoke bomb out, and as they got to it, it burned itself out. <laughs> it is 1-1. This is BBC Radio Cumbria Sports, Saturday afternoon. I think it's the best thing to do, just let it burn itself out. It was only a couple of minutes, wasn't it? Yeah, I think the problem would have been if they'd gone on the attack and Gillespie obviously could claim, if, Rob, if something yeah. went by him, he could claim that he couldn't really see it as well Rob as he colour, should have. Though. It's Yellow. still lingering in the air, mind. The smoke's still lingering around that end of the park. 15 on the clock, then. Two goals already in a smoke bomb as it's cleared by their keeper, Scott Shearer. Flicked on by Mansfield. Gillespie didn't come for it. And Michael Reigns is asking why he didn't come for it, because Reigns' clearance isn't very convincing. Now Gillespie will come for it. And the Carlisle keeper's got it safely in his hands to the goal of the right-hand side. It's bowled out to Michael Reigns. Fairly permanent fixture in that back four now, Michael Reigns. Up it goes towards Charlie White. Flicks it on, but doesn't really flick it on into anywhere. And Mansfield's right-back, Bennett, can get rid. As you say, he looks fairly comfortable, the Mansfield right-back. Yeah, it does. Um, you know, it's been very relaxed on the ball. Good height as well, isn't he? Just likes to get forward, but let's see what he's like defending. Someone against Adams is going to test him, isn't he, constantly? Short ball kicked out from Gillespie and picked up by Carlisle in the shape of Mike Jones. He finds Granger. Not that much on options, is there? Jones has had to come and retrieve the move that he started. Still has it. Chance to clear. Still on it though. Stourbridge one, Workington Reds nil in our non-league football. That's on AM and online this afternoon. As is Barrow at Dagenham, third against fourth in the National League. Good ball played here by Nicky Adams. Gets Carlisle on it around the edge of the Chance box. Kennedy. Towards Kennedy again. He fluffs his lines though. Hits it with tough, his right technique. foot onto his left foot and into the goalkeeper's arms. It's still 1-1, but Carlisle have 
tip the balance of play slightly. Yeah, good patient play, wasn't it? There wasn't many options, so they just kept it till there was. Got Tom Miller going up the other side. Good ball in from Adams, and Kennedy's got a chance there, but it's a tough technique when it's coming across your body like that. Keeper Shearer, left-footed keeper, kicks it long. Miller's first real duel of the afternoon in the air. Sees him deal with it pretty well around the edge of his own box. Good touch from Kennedy. Sets it down to Joyce. Carlisle inside their own half. Have managed to keep it in and get it played forward. Collins, the centre-half, touch is heavy, but he's also managed to keep it in. At the moment, nobody's really covering themselves in glory in the control and touch category. Here's Reggie Lamb. He has it centre of the park. Oh, his pass was just too heavy. And Mansfield are back on it in the right-back position with Bennett. Feeds it towards Hoban. Good intentions from Lamb, wasn't it? Just execution. I oh, could be disappointed, but the good thing is, every time he gets the ball, it's it's forward, isn't it? it his focus is on going forward. Leicester nil, Middlesbrough won in the Premier League this afternoon. So, a good week in the Champions League, of course, for Leicester. In the Premier League, though, they trail at home against Borough. Here it's 1-1 as... Mike Jones plays a brilliant raking ball down the right-hand side. Miller's rampaging Excellent. onto it, in towards Kennedy. Just didn't get the break. The two defenders actually went into each other, but did manage to get it clear. Fans appreciating that, though, because since going a goal behind, Carlisle have stepped themselves up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's helped them, I think. It was, again, another lacklustre start. Should we just start every game 1-0 yeah. <laughs> down, do you think? Here's Granger on the halfway line. Little think ball over the top. If it gets there, it's a good one. Doesn't, though. And Bennett is being pulled by Nicky Adams. Free kick given by Stocksbridge. Kennedy looks a lot happier, doesn't he? He's not out on that right. He's in a three-man midfield with license to go forward, isn't he? And it's no coincidence that the three chances, well, we've got the goal and a couple of a half chance and then the shot from Kennedy. It, it's all about him getting forward, not getting involved in the play in front of the back four, just license to go forward. And the lad in front of their back four, the 24, Maguire, doesn't know whether to stick or twist with him. Stourbridge now lead two against a uh, 2-0 against Workington Reds in one of our other featured games, so uh, Reds have been going well, but at the moment they're trailing by two goals to nil. Here it's Carlisle 1, Mansfield 1, and Mansfield are on it on the right-hand side, towards Matt Green, up against Stop. his man, he's twisting and turning, gets away from Reigns and gets across into the area, but Carlisle have enough men back, they should have dealt with that, they didn't deal with it, but thankfully when it fell to Mitchell Rose, he was off balance and he shot, it rose well, well over the bar, and it's still 1-1. Yeah, good play from Green, wasn't it? Kind of adopted the same tactic, it looks now. Green out to the left, Mitchell Rose on the right and Hoban the furthest one forward. And just trying to match us up a little bit. I, I like Green being out on that left, to be honest. I mean, the last thing you want him is, is in between Reigns and, and Grizzly linking up with, with Hoban. He's decent. Good flick on by White, miscontrolled by Christian Pierce, which allows Kennedy on it. He plays with such energy, Jason oh, Kennedy. Finds Adams, again he's inside the penalty area, cutting into that right foot. Just couldn't get the final ball off though, Nicky Adams, but... How many times does he touch it and take a player on in yeah. the same movement? One touch, yeah. Silly free kick given away by Sean Brizzy and he's kicked the ball away. That's not great play from Hoban, that. It's not the brightest idea from Brisley. He's going to get a yellow card because he kicked the ball away. I've got a funny feeling Mr Stocksbridge might be getting uh, assessed today because he's playing absolutely everything by the letter of the law. Yeah. Kennedy's been booked for diving. Brisley's just been booked for kicking the ball away. Pointless yellow cards to pick up, but... There'll be, a, there'll be a double yellow today, I think. Or it's just the, the way the match is going to go as well. I think it's going to get a bit more hyped. I think touch lines are going to clash. I think it's going to get a little bit eventful. That's the voice of the former Carlisle midfielder, Chris Lumsden, alongside me this afternoon. Then as the free kick is played by Mansfield, fairly flat line down the right to Oscar Goben. Carlisle have two players around him. Not a free kick according to the referee, but Mansfield just carry on and have it back. That's a good flight, he ball into the area, flicked onto the back, the flag's gone up, flag had gone up anyway, but, well, again, they got plenty of space in the box, it's probably just as well the flag had gone up. Yeah, Green, it's not the player to say that, he's won a great header, but Brisley there, just a little flick ball, a diagonal ball into the box, and a great leap. Wrexham lead 1-0 against Forest Green in the National League, the leaders of that league, Forest Green, in our featured medium-wave game, Badawa 0-0 against Dagenham. Here, Carlisle have given the ball away to Hoban, the Mansfield goal scorer. Well, he carried it about 20 yards and then he realised he'd run out of steam and then just dragged the shot away wide. It was never really testing, but again, it came from a rather loose ball from Carlisle. Yeah, Danny Granger just 
didn't have many options. He just tried to curl it around around there, right back, but it's getting cut out. Then Joyce has tried to flick it inside to Jones, and again, just like the first five minutes, just a little bit spreading. Played across the back by Carlisle. It's Michael just getting Rains, out of this it? off first third, isn't it? And getting it into Reggie Lamb on the half turn and Kennedy, and then suddenly we're very dangerous, but. We're lucky again, I say, a lot of teams get into our final third, but in League Two, the cross isn't always great, the, the passing isn't always great, the shots aren't, and Hoban's probably made a couple of decisions which he probably should have passed instead of shooting from range. And they were at us, but this is League Two, and it's that for a reason, and that's why we get back into games as well, because our quality is a lot better than other teams. We we'll play 22 minutes, it is 1-1 here on BBC Radio Cumbria Sport. Pat Hoban heading home from a corner for the visitors on six minutes, then Jason Kennedy heading home from a corner, or at least a, a move, short move from a corner for Carlisle on 12 minutes, making it 1-1 here in League Two. Forward it goes, flicked on by Mansfield, won by Michael Rains though for Carlisle, not once but twice, first with his head, then with his feet, moves it back to halfway as part of our featured football here on BBC Radio Cumbria Sports. Swansea nil, Palace won in the Premier League. Won again by Carlisle down the left-hand line, and out for another throw-in to Mansfield, right in front of the East Stand, about level with the second C in CUFC in the seating there as it's thrown down that line. Flicked further on, but out for a goal kick. Plenty of live football coming up for you then on BBC Radio Cumbria this week. Tuesday night, Baddow take on Macclesfield. It's a good one in the league for Baddow. Then next weekend, it's FA Cup action. Carlisle take on Rochdale on the Saturday. Baddow away at Bristol Rovers on the Sunday. All of those games will be featured here on BBC Radio Cumbria Sports. Working in Reds Trail 3-0 now as Reggie Lamb picks up the ball here, but tried to cushion it to the left-hand side and in the end just got a bit too much, well, in fact, a lot too much on it. Yeah, the left-back came in with him there and put in a decent challenge which put Reggie Lamb off his execution there. See Plymouth are getting beat against Morecambe. Yeah, 1-0 to going? Plymouth then in that one. Well, it's the one that uh, Paul Newton said earlier was a given that Plymouth would win that, so... If Paul could keep doing that every Saturday, then who knows, he might jinx them every week. Wed Working Reds are trailing 4-0 now in their game this afternoon. An absolute spanking for Workington Reds in that first half by the sounds of it. Uh, they'll only be 24 minutes in as well. Here it's 1-1. Ball is with Sean Brisley. White boots looking forward, plays it left-footed towards White. Defender is all over Charlie White what you can hear the fans claiming referee doesn't believe that's the case and the game continues with Luke Joyce in possession inside his own half for Carlisle over the top by Reigns oh, again it's, it's a misplaced pass by yeah, Michael it's Reigns good, it's good play from Joyce just you know what he's done there he's, he's took an extra touch on the ball so that Mansfield step up he gives it to Reigns on so he can just take it first time he's got to clip that into to Charlie Wake's chest there with quality Newport one Blackpool one a scoreline in this division that I can see just to my left hand side Graham Wesley's side equalising against Blackpool this afternoon, here there's a throw in when the ball eventually gets returned for Mansfield fairly similar position to before actually just in front of that east stand Goban has come short for it but I think he's wanting it hurled further I think Steve Evans is gesturing it goes further down that line which is where it does go Joyce has got some defending to do, Mansfield might get round the back, ball hasn't gone out so Mike Jones does have to deal with it I think the ball has gone out again there, you know. Yeah. As you say, that looked more more out than you know, the initial corner for the goal. Nobody's jumped for that. Brisley's been out jumped for it when he eventually does go in for it. And Mansfield have got it moved to the left-hand side where they might now get the cross in. It clears Hoban. In fact, it clears everybody, thankfully, and goes out for a throw in in their left-back position. Okay. But that's just the people say there's not a big difference between League One and League Two. I feel there is definitely in the final third. I think we've been absolutely demolished by teams I mean you were here for the Coventry game and Bradford and things like that where they get in your final third when you've got a man and the punish a man over and they punish you in League 2 you get away with it quite a bit Mansfield are on it again in Carlisle's final third although they've laid it back to the halfway line now then a long ball oh, into the feet of Hoban turns Brisley and feeds it left hand side neat little knock down the line gets Matt Green in possession Mansfield's leading goal scorer this season, Matt Green. In fact, 73 goals to his name in his career with Mansfield. 
They've got to try and keep possession here, though, of the Stags, because their passing wasn't the cool. straightest around that area. See if now... He's gone down there. How is that any worse a dive to what Jason Kennedy did before? He was barely touched. Oh, it's great skill, that, isn't it, though? Great skill doesn't mean he can dive, surely, does it? I think it's a foul. I think, as you say, though, he's... He's made sure he's got it, hasn't he? But he's, he's also a chance to book him, to be honest, with the way he's went over. I thought the referee, the way he started, would have pulled up. Even though it is a foul, I think he would have pulled up. A free kick to Mansfield, then inside the Carlisle half. It was given, and Oscar Goban will take it. Stands it up left-footed towards the back of the box. Miller gets probably just his fringe on it to get it half clear. Doesn't even get it exited from the box, so they reload second what phase. Falls yeah. back to Goban. Driven! Wide! Oh. Just waiting for that to hit the net, isn't it? That's a definite corner. <laughs> it went in slow motion that after it left his left boot. Well, maybe that'll level things up because it was a corner and the referee's yeah. given a goal kick. So he's not bad for one, he's bad for both Seb Stocksbridge so far, the referee. And it is still 1 1, but my if word. If he does end up sending people off or booking many, he's brought this on himself, the referee. He's created this little atmosphere now amongst both teams and both benches with some of the strange decisions he's made. Jones, Joyce, Granger. Triangles played by Carlisle till they eventually involve Brisley, which I'm sure makes it a square if you put a fourth person in that equation. Played to equation, the right. Equation, square, where are we like? <laughs> Back Miller. Yeah, but now a fifth person involved, I'm absolutely snookered. I don't know what that would be. Carlisle on it around the halfway line, over the top towards Kennedy, plays with such energy, Carlisle's goal scorer this afternoon. Nods it down to Lamb. Lamb's again forced into a quick ball to Granger. Carlisle are fairly far advanced here and they have numbers trying to put a bit of an overload on Mansfield as Adams is now on it Joyce low ball into Kennedy Adams just wearing away chipping away at the Mansfield back line now Adams is crosses to Evie it's not often you say that I don't even think that's going to go out for a goal kick that you know it might even go out for a throw in in the left back position eventually goes out for a goal kick because Miller got forward to stop it being a throw in and yeah. put it out for a goal kick it's 1-1 we've played 28 minutes on BBC Radio Cumbria Sport. Good game. I mean, it's not free flowing football, but it's a good tussle, isn't it? Both teams kind of the same. They like to mix it. They can play the good football, but they're going to be aggressive as well. And we've just seen a few challenges going in, and in a in a good way, a lack of respect between both teams. Mansfield don't care that Carlisle are up the top, and Carlisle just want to, you know, steamroller anyone they come against and have a respect that they are better than any team they come come up against. Balls out for a throw into Mansfield, who of course lost Adam Murray as their manager just a couple of weeks ago. That's why Steve Evans is here. Murray going out, and in the end, Muzzer was kind of clutching at straws in the fact that he said one of his training sessions he was going to teach them how to wash their hands properly to cut illness in the squad. That's that's when you know you're under pressure when you start saying things like that. Murray went, Evans is in, and it looks like, unfortunately, it is to say it for Adam Murray, but it looks like Evans is the tonic they needed. Yeah, I think it stayed. It, it, it the job too long was have done a great job didn't he and his remit was to get to get them you know safe in league two i think it's changed a little bit this season it's changed with finances but what the playoffs and evans can maybe bring them back the carlisle have a free kick that's what you can hear going on in the background charlie white was hauled to the ground by christian pierce evans who we were just talking about is not endearing himself to the fans Doncaster trail this afternoon as well. Lake Norient are leading against Doncaster. So uh, Lake Norient leading against Doncaster. Morecambe leading against Plymouth at the moment. All results, apart from this one being a draw at the moment. Both yeah. officials got a long, long day ahead of them here. Free kick Carlisle then, which will be delivered from this left-hand side Great in by ball. Adams. Great Everyone's ball. missed it and it's toe poked wide. I think it's Michael Range who joined in from the back stick and as he arrived, well, it's one of those where he got too much on it, Michael Range, and instead of just steering it goal-bound, he's toe-poked it into the advertising hoardings and wide. It's still 1-1, but anybody else but Michael Range on the end of that? Maybe, but I know he wouldn't, and I wouldn't either, but if you leave that, that's in, isn't it? The goalkeeper's all ends up, and as you say, he's just got a bit too much on it, probably to do too much of the ball, just got to turn his foot round, let that hit his sidestep, but it's easy to say from here. You've got to know whereabouts you are. A natural finisher like a Sean Miller knows exactly what to do, but again, Nicky Adams, what a ball. You can't defend them. Well, how long before either Steve Evans or his assistant gets sent to the stand because the pair of them are still grumbling on at the fourth official 
as you say, Sean Hudson, the fourth official. I actually could, I couldn't be, you know, it's only how long's gone. They're both having their I names taken by the care. fourth official. I, obviously you care, but you couldn't be bothered to keep going as long as they're going. You know, the game's going on, you want to start talking about your team or giving instructions, but they just keep coming over to the fourth official, and I think soon he's going to well, call the, the referee over. I think that's what he was just to, mentioning to the referee in his ear there, actually, because he was talking in his earpiece and the referee looked towards him, so I think there was some communication between the two about what had gone on on this touchline. As it is, it's a throw into Mansfield once they do get themselves in position to take it. It is 1-1. Workington Reds trail 5-0 now. 5-0 down. Connor Tinian will miss next weekend's game from a booking that he's just picked up. Here go Mansfield then here. Left football into the area. It's dangerous and Gillespie has to take it and does take it on the edge of his six-yard line. Safe hands from Gillespie. Bowled out quickly by him. 32 minutes then played here and it's 1-1 as the knock long by range is chested White. down by Wyke he's so good at that link up play Charlie Wyke finds Danny Granger just at the back and sell there he's Adams. Like Adams wouldn't fancy being a fullback against Nicky Adams he's got upper body strength and he's got tricks and he uses them to win a throw in Carlisle moved themselves off down this left hand line Villa 1 Cardiff 1 in the championship Sheffield Wednesday lead 2-0 against Wolves Steve Evans again is at the fourth official to a fourth official, dear me. Does he ever shut up? Throw in which Granger will take into the area then. The players are carrying on. Here's Joyce, Kennedy, can't get the flick on, but it might break for Charlie White, pushes his man. Easy foul for Mansfield to pick up, really, and they have a free kick. And Well, unfortunately, at the moment, as tends to be the case when Steve Evans comes to your ground, a lot of the attention is what's going on on the touchline. Keith Curl's having a word with the fourth official now. I think Keith Curl just said, punch him. <laughs> <That's the thing. laughs> I, him. I couldn't be bothered to be that bothered. You know, it's a towel, they're out drying the, the balls. They can use the towels if they want. That was the latest gripe, by but the I way, think, from I Steve think Evans. Know, I think he knows what he's doing. Uh, you know, he's having a little smile there. But I think it's part of the game plan to create this siege mentality, like they're getting nothing. You know, coming to Carlisle's a bit of an intimidating thing now. You know, the crowd right on you. We've, we've got a good... We're having a great season up to now, so he's got to do things to disrupt it. And we're not going to agree with them, but there is a method in the madness. Well, Carlisle second place, and as it stands, they will close the gap again. There's only two points behind Plymouth if everything stays the way as it is. It's worked, though. He's got to get the towels in now. Because he's seeing as if for both teams or as if for one. Thrown in by Mansfield, then the action now goes on again on the field as it's rolled to Clements. Little ball round the side, good doubling up from Carlisle and then back to Gillespie who has a little slight slip on the top of the surface Gillespie as he clears that up to Waiku flicks on although he's only chasing his own knock on and Mansfield can go all the way home to the keeper Shearer he clears long left footed well up Michael Reigns one back though by Mansfield and Reese Bennett is on it hooks it right footed down that line Granger gets his head on it Mansfield pick up the bits again. Carl Alex go try and get themselves scrapping back into this as Goburn who some funny decisions from Mansfield. Oscar Goburn, I've seen him a while ago. I think it was Bournemouth he started at and got a good move at the time when Huddersfield were above and he's just went from club to club and his decision making today. I've been very surprised with someone of his his ability taking half volley shots on there from 35 yards when his wingers just to the left of him. His his pass as well for the initial free kick from Danny Granger that led to the corner. Of our equaliser, well, not a great day up there now. The ball goes out then for a throw into Carlisle, which Granger retrieves and takes quickly to Jones. Back to Granger. Carlisle happy just to play it on this left hand line. Reggie Lamb joins in now. Little turn away from the former Mansfield man, Reggie Lamb. Of course, Keith Curl, the Carlisle manager, was at Mansfield for a time as well. A lot of people at Mansfield think he was hard done by actually, and he wasn't given the time to implement the changes that he's managed to do here he started trying to play football with them and it wasn't working the results weren't coming for them and they just didn't give him the time that he has pretty much had here at Carlisle to get things moving in the right direction here's Granger left hand side trying to drive by his man as he yep, nudged off balance and it will be a free kick to Carlisle and again Steve Evans He's absolutely bouncing about it, but it's, it, I don't think he does himself any fears. If you get the paddock going, 
it's, it's to the detriment of his team because they get right behind Carlisle but it's not a free kick for me but he's, he <laughs> should know by now the referee's performance it's going to be soft yet today who's his assistant by the way who's that is it Paul Rayner is that who it is Paul Rayner because Rayner then Rayner has a go, a go at the fourth official he has a go at the liner and just occupies the pair of them's time free kick Carlisle then can we really give him something to twine about? Adams delivers it into the area. Shearer comes, good punch from the keeper, gets both fists on it as he comes through traffic and then Joyce picks up the bits with a brilliant sliding challenge around the centre circle, giving Carlisle a chance to pump it back in the box. Cleared away by Clements for Mansfield though. 1-1 it is on BBC Radio Cumbria Sport. Mike Jones has it, blue shirts just seem to have disappeared from him for the time being he finds Nicky Adams hit might open up for a shot curls one instead and it bounced up in front of the keeper well. but he does very well on a fairly iced up surface to get his hands wrapped around that the goalkeeper Shearer dives down on it and it's still 1-1 here as elsewhere West Brom lead 1-0 against Hull in the Premier League and Leicester have equalised against Borough 1-1 there now as well keeper's done well there it's one of them that bounces just in front of him and it can spill out but he's watched it all the way voice of Chris Lumsden alongside me this afternoon here on BBC Radio Cumbria Sports Lumi will be pleased to know that James Phillips will return to his normal position in time for next Saturday's game against Rochdale, JP will be back in the hot seat here at Carlisle United as Kennedy picks it up for Carlisle, here's Jones now around the centre circle plenty of applause from the Carlisle fans for what they're trying to do Adams, just class he's just brilliant Nicky Adams, turns and feeds the ball to Joyce, he's looking for Granger to arrive and join in and then Joyce and Adams run into each other and they have won a th oh, they haven't won a throw in out of it I thought it was a Carlisle throw but it is a Mansfield one and just a breakdown in communication between yeah. Joyce and Adams yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I think Adams can take that from them there obviously not giving the shot the shout, that's why he's just got caught up but it's a bit better isn't it I think half time not really much to change one of them games where it's just went a bit physical instead of free throwing football but again got to find a way of winning these games and we usually do Bennett throws it up the right hand line it's controlled by Mansfield it's not bad footwork actually although Carlisle have tag teamed Granger and Jones get across and do well to win a throw in Swansea have equalised against Palace it's now 1-1 in their game as well Granger's allowed to use a towel again <laughs> He complains about using towels, Steve Evans, more than my wife does. She's not a fan when you use towels that are only meant to be there for <laughs> decoration. Well, you can see what the Carlisle fans think of the current situation, and the fourth official has had it. He's had enough of Steve Evans and has called the referee over. Well, I think they're getting clarification on the use of the towel situation because Evans is unhappy that every time Carlisle have a throw in a ball boy brings a towel for Danny Granger but every time Mansfield have a throw in that towel is thrown <laughs> the other side of the advertising hoardings and never to be seen but it's 1-1 by the way and we will get back underway with a throw in no reprimand for Steve Evans it's thrown in long by Granger flicked backwards by the Mansfield defender and the keeper Shearer again has done well you can see he's an experienced keeper because yeah, yeah he is he deals with those balls in there well he doesn't get sucked in does he to the people running around him but I think as we're coming to these winter months the set players are going to be more of a factor aren't they people are seeing Carlisle for what they are oh. the doubling up on Adams etc the towel has been confiscated <laughs> Kit towel man has Cole. been taken he just wants a, a nice easy day Cole doesn't he kit man Cole he just wants to sit there watch the lads win now he's got to go around the ground collecting all the all the towels well in. I'm sure if James Phillips was here this would be now towel gate he would have had his own little subheading for this played in by Bennett towards the back of the box Hoban jumps but it's headed away See, by Reigns he's never going to win it in the air against Reigns but what he does is he, he shoves his body into Reigns so that Reigns' clearances don't go as far as usual Ball played in second phase by Mansfield. Gillespie does well, takes it under pressure. Too much pressure, according to the referee. And it will be a free kick to Carlisle inside their own penalty area. Matt Green fouling yeah. goalkeeper Mark Gillespie. Four minutes of the first half to go. Yeah, This yeah. one's flown by, last week didn't. <laughs> no, victim of one success, as I've said. Teams are now coming up and doubling up on Adams, etc. And set players are going to be massive in the winter months. And just seen there, Danny Green just throws the ball into an area, but it's not just the throw. All the lads are working off. There's blocks going on. There's corners we score from as well. So Simon Tracy, I'm led to believe, gets really stuck into these set players and researches them and puts them on for the lads. And 
be interesting to see the stats up to Christmas, how many will score off set players. Well, Sean Brisley is coming off with his shirt a bit of blood. off. Yeah, he's, he's just taking a bat in the face off, off Pat Hoban, who, as you say, he was never going to win the header again, but made sure Brisley didn't get good contact, and Brisley comes off now to get a new shirt and to get the blood cleaned off his nose. And that's the kind of game he's in for by the look of things. Sean Brisley against Pat Hoban. It was Hoban who gave Mansfield the lead back on six minutes. Jason Kennedy levelled on 12. Played towards Felt range, it. flicked on. The defender just took it off the flight path of Jason Kennedy and the goalkeeper, Scott Shearer, will have it. Yeah, it's not pretty, is it? It's just an absolute chipped ball at the box for Reigns, but people can't get round him. It's a great flick on again. And again, Kennedy is the one just buzzing about. Definitely one for Sean Miller later on who gets around them flick ons and always, you know, can create a chance. Hoban flicks on again for Mansfield. This time Reigns gets a leg out and clears. Goban can't pick up the bits for Mansfield. It's Reggie Lamu scrapping away. Charlie White comes across to help him now as well. And eventually they do shut off any intended pass and put it out for a throw in to Mansfield. Fairly central, round about the halfway line on the left hand side. Barrow have scored against Dagenham, 1-0. Liam Hughes has scored it. What a big win that could be if they were to win that this afternoon. Would certainly set down a marker for their chance to get up to the Football League, that's for sure. It's Here Mansfield have it with Goban. Rolls his foot over it and plays it in towards the back post. There's the header coming in towards goal. Gillespie <laughs> comes and Gillespie claims. Yeah. Just safely in the Carlisle keeper's hands at 1-1. And then an off-the-ball foul. And there's going to be a yellow card to Mitchell Rose. Well, with this referee today, he's not going to get away with that. Adams was breaking away to try and get the throw out from Gillespie. Mitchell Rose just stepped across him and obstructed him off the ball, right in the eye line of the referee. He flashes a yellow card at the Mansfield 19, Mitchell Rose. And well, so far this afternoon, that's three yellow cards we've had. Yeah, he's got a lot of paperwork tonight, hasn't he, already? A few pages of the bookings. But the thing is, he's set himself up for the second half now. He can't just ignore any foul. Reigns goes over on the intended long ball. Nothing comes of it, though. And Mansfield clear. It's picked up by Mike Jones. Oh, oh, that's a very, very poor ball from Jones. He didn't realise Matt Green was on the edge of the area. Green steps over it. Won back by Mike Jones. And he had to get that challenge right in the box because it was him who caused the fuss in the first place. Yeah, Jones gets Jones. back. Did well to get back, though, and he had to. Lambs on it now. Down the right. Goes by one and then yep. four. Uh, Spook it. It's a foul. Carl Carl free so kick. It's a foul. Can't, if you appeal for everything, I don't know if they don't get their experience. If you appeal for everything, you, you end up not getting it. I know it's hard with the passion of football, but, and he's got results the way he's been. But it's a foul there. Jones, great play, and then suddenly just kicks his own foot, doesn't he? But great recovery. But you can tell by the way he did make that final challenge. He's went awkwardly over on his ankle a little bit. He's just feeling it now, isn't he? Limping. He is limping. Yeah, good spot from Chris Lumsden, who's alongside me this afternoon. Might just be an impact, one of them. Ayaz, free kick, Carlisle in by that's he's all over Michael Reigns there. It's right in front of the referee as well in the penalty area, but nothing given. Three minutes time added on then. I mean, how can that not have been anywhere else on the pitch? And that's a foul on Michael Reigns there. Here's Miller, tosses one back over the top. Reigns has stayed forward. Joyce with the flick on, is it going to find its intended target? It is, you know, Brisley, yeah, yeah. but Brisley yeah, was offside. offside. Proper centre-half, didn't realise where he was. Offside, free-kick Mansfield, and we are into the time added on in the first half. At 1-1, we will have three minutes of time added on here then. Worst time for Jones, half-time. So he had to, had to sprint back there, and it was testing him, but he's looking at it now, and half-time, he'll have to stay on the move. Don't be surprised if he comes out here in a hoodie or something. You know, five minutes after for half of time and just keeps it on the move we'll be interested to see Mansfield of course back in this division quite a bit of the work done by the Barrow manager nowadays Paul Cox he got them back into the Football League after of course they had a little bit of time away 77 years in the Football League and then back in 2008 they found themselves relegated from it as at the moment they've got to defend Reggie Lamb breaking towards them heavy ball to the right Tom Miller does keep it in, but he's had to do a lot of work to do so. Then feeds it back to Reggie Lamb. The space inside the box is for Mike Jones, but he can't get it under control. Neither can Reggie Lamb when it comes back to him, so Mansfield should clear. Sets it on his better foot, the fullback, and does get rid of it. Plymouth have equalised 
against Morecambe. 1-1 in that one. He's Nicky Adams. Nothing really for him to find at the moment. Across the back to Brisley. Now with Danny Granger making an option. Left-hand side of the halfway line. Carlisle being forced backwards by Mansfield's hard work at the minute. Joyce finds Jones. Adams has gone left to right, hoping he can get on the end of this, and he is going to, thanks to Reggie Lamb's link-up play. Adams then got by the full-back, but I'm not sure whether he intended to just knock that ball on for Jones, and in the end, both of them stood still and allowed Mansfield to get back and put it out for a Carlisle throwing in the closing stages of this first half here at Brunton Park. 8-1, treble three is our text number. Start your message with the word Cumbria. 8-1, treble three, Cumbria space, then your message, and the... Ironic cheers around us is because from somewhere they found a towel on that far right hand side which Miller uses to dry the ball off and throw it in. Headed away by Mansfield as far as Jones, oh. urged to shoot. Not a great ball from Jones, but he does get it back and can do something with it from here. Ball played in. Again, strong defending from Mansfield. They've stayed fairly solid of the stags in this first half. As Granger loops one back into the box. Loops. Too high for everybody. <laughs> it was a loop as well. <laughs> He's come back down with some snow on it. Throw in Carlisle. Barrow are leading 2-0 against Dagenham. Byron Harrison, unbelievable as the half-time whistle does sound here then on BBC Radio Cumbria Sports, singling the uh, end of the first half between Carlisle and Mansfield. The first half which saw the Stags take the lead through Pat Hope and he got in on a corner as it dropped inside the six-yard box. He just had to get his head on it, make contact and score, which is what he did to make it 1-0. However, similar to last Saturday, Carlisle weren't behind long. This time it was Jason Kennedy on the end of a decent move from a corner from the far side. It came into the box and Kennedy steered his head beyond Scott Shearer and into the bottom left-hand corner. A lot of the action, as you would expect when the likes of Steve Evans, the Mansfield manager, is in town. A lot of the action has happened inside the technical areas, but at the moment, Chris Lumsden, you would think 1-1 is a reasonably yeah. fair scoreline. Yeah, it is. I think we didn't start great. They got the goal, and you think, is this one of the games where they get confidence, Mansfield keep coming forward? But they didn't. They just stepped off a little bit, and Carlisle suddenly got the bit between their teeth and had a great 10 minutes culminating and getting the goal and then it's just been a bit of a battle hasn't it two teams physical in the centre of the park not great deal of quality a lot of to and fro and a lot coming off the pitch you know shenanigans on off the pitch going on uh, it has flown by but quality not great but you just feel something's about to explode in the second half don't you well, as we say, you can have your say on the text. 81333 is our text number. Start your message with the word Cumbria or join in on Twitter at BBC Cumbria Sport. Put that in your message and we will get it. We've got the second 45 coming live from Brunton Park. But at the break, it's Carlisle United 1, Mansfield Town 1. BBC Radio Cumbria Sport. 